Right. Now, we've come to the hybrids based on the architecture. What are the hybrids based on architecture? First, you have a series hybrid. So what does a series hybrid do? Uh, as you, I, I hope all of you can see my mouse, mouse pointer. So here is the IC engine. What is an IC engine powered by? It's powered by petrol or diesel. Then that we see IC engine is connected to a generator, which converts your know, mechanical energy to electrical energy. Then it goes on to a power converter, obviously, AC to DC. Then it charges your battery. Now, from the battery, the battery powers the electric motor. And then finally, the electric motor goes to the rear wheels or the front wheels. Or if it is a high power vehicle, it needs a transmission. It goes to the transmission and then to the wheels. A series hybrid architecture is very simple. An engine powering the battery, battery powering the motor. The motor drives the car. It's as simple as that. Next, is this is a parallel hybrid. At times, when you want to use the IC engine, you can use the IC engine. And at other times, when you want to use the electric motor, you can use the electric motor. So again, IC engine powered by petrol or diesel goes to a coupler in the transmission. The battery powered by electricity goes to a power converter, which powers the electric motor, goes to a coupler, transmission, then the wheel. So this provides more flexibility, but uh, you have to be careful about this mechanical coupler. And that's about it. Next architecture is a series parallel hybrid. Right. This is where things start, start getting complex. You have the IC engine fueled by petrol or diesel, which goes to a mechanical coupler, then to the transmission. Or you have the IC engine powering the generator, which goes to the power converter, which goes to the battery, which powers the electric motor, and then the transmission. Or you can bypass the engine, battery, power converter, electric motor, transmission. So there are a lot more modes of operation. You can have the engine standalone driving the car, or you can have the battery standalone driving the car, or you can have the engine driving the car, as well as charging the battery, which provides assistance in slow speed. Now, this is a very, very complex uh, you know, schematic. As the name rightly says, it's a complex hybrid. So I'll just give you a minute to you know, absorb all this. You have your IC engine, the fuel tank, the coupler straight to the transmission, or the generator, power converter, battery, again, power converter, motor, transmission. So this is a very complex sort of layout, which is not really used, but it exists, which is similar to the series parallel hybrid, but it is not used due to the sheer complexity. That's all. And it's too many parts to, you know, put into the car and as well as think of the passengers who sit in the car with, you know, uh, foot space and headroom and legroom. I think we can move on. Right. Hybrids based on the level of hybridization. Like I, you must have heard micro hybrid, you know, mild hybrid, strong hybrid, full hybrid. Let's see what exactly these are. A few major classifications. You have micro hybrids, which have an integrated starter generator plus a start stop system. Next, you have an integrated starter generator hybrid. Next, you have a mild hybrid, and then finally, a full hybrid. So I've just put in a few pictures of Indian cars that you can you know, easily understand. So a micro hybrid with just a start-stop system with the same lead acid battery, which just helps you in switching off the car and switching it on at traffic lights, has already been introduced in the Mahindra Scorpio, which has already been there for a long, long time, and it, it badly needs a facelift. So what does this car do? What does a start-stop system mean? So when you stop, when the car comes to a stop at a set of traffic lights, and the car is in neutral, and the start-stop system is switched on by the driver, the car automatically stops, 
thereby saving fuel by not running idling at the traffic stop. Then when you press the clutch, when the signal turns green, the car immediately starts and you go on with your journey. It's as simple as that. You have a traditional engine, the electric motor is belt driven, like your starter motor. Uh, the power, electric power that the motor generates is barely two to five kilowatts. Again, it's a standard 12 volt system. You have a minor improvement of three to five percentage in your fuel economy. Now, which Indian car has an ISG hybrid micro hybrid system? This is a Suzuki CS or any Maruti with the SHVS system, which you have seen. Initially, they introduced their diesel cars. Now, since the uh, uh, VS6 advent of VS6 has occurred, they have switched completely to petrol and they are offering their SHVS system in petrol as well. So what is the difference between the Scorpio mentioned here and the CIS mentioned here? This runs on a 12 to 42 volt system. It has a lithium ion battery for, you know, start stop and as well as it providing boost. This is not too much. It provides a small amount of acceleration at low, low speeds. But again, the fuel economy improvement is only 5 to 10 percentage. Again, the operating voltage is 12 to 42 volts. Electric power is around 3 to 10 kilowatts. Now, the motor can be either on the belt or the crankshaft. You can also have regenerative braking, which converts your kinetic energy when you brake to electric power. So let's move on to the mild hybrid. So this is a Mercedes M-Class. If you're not familiar with the M-Class, it's quite old. The M-Class has become the GLE. And any Mercedes blue tech you take in, that is, they are plug-in hybrids or mild hybrids. You have a very small range of, say, 20 to 30 kilometers in electric-only range. And obviously, you have a downsized petrol engine. So suppose you take this car as only an internal combustion engine. You, it might have a 2,000 cc engine or a maximum 2,500 cc engine. So since it's a mild hybrid, it will have probably a 1.5 liter engine, 1,500 cc, since it has an electric motor to cope when you're coasting or in, you know, in the city. So it operates at a high voltage range of 60 to 200 volts. You have pretty good fuel economy improvement and your electric motor is connected to the belt or the crankshaft. Now let's move on to a proper hybrid. This is the Toyota Camry. This is introduced in the electric uh, electric vehicle segment by Toyota in India. And it has a downsized engine. You have the electric motor connected to the crankshaft. And this is a typical series hybrid. You have the engine running on an Atkinson cycle, not the typical auto cycle. It runs on the Atkinson cycle. It charges, you know, the batteries, the battery, powers the motor and the car moves. So this is a typical series hybrid layout and it gives a fuel economy improvement over the standard Toyota Camry petrol up to 30 percentage. But the operating voltage is, is quite high since it is a proper lithium ion tank. 